I'm uh, Reverend Warren McNeil, uh, Minister at Greenford Baptist Church. Many of you already know who I am. Today's uh, midweek video, we, we are attempting to do these about once every week, but this is August, uh, one every couple of weeks. I was uh, searching around on the uh, the internet, uh, looking for something specific, and just in the process, I stumbled across uh, a, a, a recording of um, of effectively what it was. It was in America, but it was two what I can only assume were two foster parents uh, recording uh, themselves telling a foster child that they've had with them for something like six months. Uh, recording themselves telling this foster child that they want to adopt them. They want to adopt the child. And the reaction of this child was immensely clear. Clearly, uh, and I'm saying when I'm saying child, I, I'm sorry, I mean a teenager. And this teenager uh, collapsed in tears, collapsed into both the soon to obviously to be her adopted parent into hugging them but sort of literally in tears sobbing uh, clearly with gratefulness and embracing these new parents and they obviously these new parents embracing this teenager clearly for this teenager had been uh, being in foster care maybe for some time i'm not quite sure but part of the video was was this uh, the, the new dad uh, explaining that i know the last few weeks have not been easy but no matter what the enemy tells you we love you and we want to adopt you so in my head i thought well these uh, the sounds of it must have been christians i mean that's the sort of language that christians tend to use you know no matter what the enemy's been telling you but i looked at the response of this teenager clearly there was this sense of acceptance this sense of we accept you as you are no idea what the few difficult weeks have been no idea what this teenager probably thinks of themselves or what they think other people think of them but when these two foster parents said we want to adopt you and therefore make you legally ours so that you are permanently in our home permanently come under our care as a child of ours that you will always be known as mr and mrs child or, or whatever <laughs> um, their name is that you will now be under our protection under our provision we want to make it known that you are ours and and almost a sense i suppose maybe of saying we want to make it known that you're ours and that we are proud of you that's why we're taking you as our very own. That set uh, uh, of, sorry, that sense of acceptance and the fact that they chose to uh, adopt this teenager. So therefore this teenager has been chosen. Must have been immensely overwhelming uh, and immensely uh, just life-giving life-giving to this teenager it got me thinking as you can imagine and then I sort of went to the Bible and as we know in John 1 uh, verse 12 uh, God it's made very clear that those who accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Saviour then become the right to be known as children of God. And Ephesians 1 verse 5 says this, and I just need to read it. God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. I want to say that again. God has 
decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ, to us through the saving work of his son Jesus on that cross. It also says in that same verse at the end, this is what he wanted to do and it gave him great pleasure. So God wanted to adopt all of us into being his children. Now back to that video very briefly that actually you could see for these foster parents eventually to become legally the true parents uh, of adoption of this teenager. It is something they wanted to do. It brought them great pleasure to do it, to show that much love. They, they will do it through uh, legal paperwork. Uh, God has adopted us and it's brought him great pleasure. He did it through the blood of his son on the cross. And then it also says in John 15 verse 16 that Jesus turns around and said, You did not choose me, but I chose you. And then I started reflecting, what's the difference between being um, born into a family and being adopted by a family? Recognising I need to be incredibly careful. Uh, this is just a broad statement. I do recognise that uh, we've all had very different experiences, both being born into a family and our experience of that family and the parenthood can range from incredibly brilliant to probably maybe the worst experience ever in your life. Uh, I, I do recognise I could be talking to anybody uh, right now through this medium. And I recognise I could also be talking to people who have been adopted. So they have been, for whatever reason, put up for adoption. Um, they are... Uh, were adopted and I recognise again the experience of being part of an adopted family can be from incredibly excellent to maybe the worst experience of your life. So I recognise all of that. So please hear me very carefully in this. But I suppose if you're born into a family and you grow up in a family and it could be the most loving experience of your life, there could be an element of you that could be turning around and saying, well, my parents had to love me. They had to have me. So they had to love me. They had to put up with me. And so you may, even though they might be pouring out a whole bunch of love on you, there could be a part of you and saying, well, they had to do that. And you might be always fearful of disappointing them or making a really big mistake and letting what you perceive to let them down. And you might be turning around and saying, well, do they really love me as the person I am now? Yes, they wanted a child, but really, did they want the child that they have now? Or did they have other plans and other ideas for that child? Maybe they're disappointed in, in what I've become and what I've achieved. I, I, I just like to make this very clear right now. This is not from my own experience I'm talking. I, I just want to make that clear before anybody's reading stuff into that that is not actually there. But that could be how you're feeling about your natural parenthood. And the problem is we can maybe take those thoughts and feelings and we can transfer that onto God our Father who says, I have chosen you. And we can transfer onto him and say, yeah, well, you, you got to sort of put up with me then. Did you, am I what you wanted to be? But when, when God turns around and says, I, or when Jesus turns around and says, you did not choose me, I chose you. I chose you. That tends to change the perspective on our thinking that, yes, God chose you now. And he knows everything about you. And he also knows what you're going to do in the future. 
He's chosen you. And he loves you for who you are. And he has adopted you into his family if you choose to accept that adoption. Back to that video. That clear choice by that child, uh, that teenager, had to be that they probably also had to choose to say yes. I'm assuming by the reaction I saw on the video that the answer was yes. And in, in accepting that adoption, that, that, child, that teenager says, I accept to come under the roof of the authority of this household. I come under its rules, under the rules of love that it's showing me, under the rules of what I can and can't do. I accept all of the rights of being part of this family, except that provision will always be provided, that love will always be there. It will be, uh, hopefully, I believe, unconditional. Though obviously only God can really give real, truly unconditional love correctly. But that's the acceptance that an adopted uh, teenager uh, accepts is part of the, the being adopted. It's not just the, it is the love and it's everything that comes with that. But it's also everything that the parents try and help and help that person become all that they can be. The adopted teenager has to accept that. And we are no different. We be we teenagers now as we're accepted by Christ, uh, God or be we much considerably older adults. We accept this adoption and all the rights and privileges and provision and unconditional love that comes with. We accept it all as part and parcel of the and I will come under your your authority. I will turn to you as my loving father, as my parent and say, you know, receive instructions from you. Receive the sense of, is this what you want me to do? Is it okay if I do this? And I will listen to that authority, just as I'm sure this teenager does. Having to learn what it's like to be in part of this new family. Learning a new way of being. Also recognising that this teenager has been accepted fully into the family we do the same with God we have to do the same we are accept we have to accept that we are accepted fully into the family of God and in the process we have to learn how to be a new creation be a new person as part of this family of God and of course the best way to do that is through the Bible but I want to leave us with this what is my reaction? What is your reaction as you think and reflect on the fact that you are an adopted child of God? You have become a child with all the rights and the privileges that comes with being a child of the living God. What is your reaction? What is my reaction? What is my daily reaction to that? What is, how does that affect my daily life? The way I think about myself. That I am accepted as a child of the living God. That I have been adopted into the biggest family going. Into the family that shows unconditional love. And the family that says, by the way, I give you eternal rest and life with me. What is my daily reaction to that? Do I get caught up? still by all the identity of the world or do I recognize that I couldn't care less whether I've been rejected by people before I couldn't care less if if um yeah if if what the society says that I don't live up to society standards I don't care I've been accepted by the living God as his child What does it mean to me, to you, that God says, I chose you? I don't care how you've been rejected. I choose you. To me, it's mind-blowing. To me, it's mind-blowing. And I hope you find it mind-blowing. Uh, 
You may not have accepted Jesus fully. You're watching this because you're somehow connected with Greenford Baptist Church or you know me or, or whatever else. You've not quite fully accepted Jesus into your life. You've not accepted that God is Lord over your life and wants to be because he wants the very best for you. He, he wants the very best because he wants you to accept him as his as your loving father. Because he chooses to adopt you if you accept that adoption. I urge you maybe to really reflect on the fact that he wants to adopt you. And it gives him great pleasure to do so. For those of us that have known him maybe for a long time. And we've accepted him. Just reflect on, on the fact that you have all the rights and the privileges of heaven. And that you are still a dearly loved child of God. And he would choose you again and again and again. Yes, even how you're feeling now. Even if you've really messed up recently. He's still that father who says, you're still mine. I still choose you. I chose you before. I haven't stopped choosing you. Turn back to him. Fall into his embracing hug. And as you hug him, he hugs you at exactly the same time. As he reminds you today that no matter what anybody else has said, no matter what the world has said, he still chooses you. God bless to you.